Here we go, the match is underway. These three divas have competed. Surprisingly, they were the, actually these three competed in Wet and Wild 4 last month at Beach Blast. That was a very entertaining fight. In the ending, it was Cytheri who had won. She became the number one contender, competed with Pain on two occasions. Supercard 7 and the following Tuesday Night Bomb edition. At the end, Pain retains the championship. Cytheria must be so heartbroken, but she's so determined. She's so determined to succeed. She thinks she plays it so blindly that she'll be the next women's champion, outranking Alicia, who's been in this business way longer than anyone in this organization, Fantasy Pro Wrestling. A lot longer than Macy. Oh, nice. Speaking of which, Alicia just breaks up that DDT in mid-move to attack on the former number one contender. We have no contenders right now for the women's championship. Payne is just sitting at home contemplating who her next, who, who will be the next opponent for her on the outside. Cytheria, oh no. That's in Nebraska, turns the tides around, but watch out, there's Alicia. There is a third party in this. Oh, nice. Standing, uh, schoolgirl, if you will. Speaking of schools, ladies and gentlemen, moments ago, when the show had just, just started, for the perfect crime came out to bark out on me, and I'm glad they didn't attack me, because otherwise I would sue their ass. They would definitely fail their business course, and no way on earth Will they ever win their precious Tornado Tag Team Championship gold belts? Fuck that, man. And if anything, and I speak the truth, ladies and gentlemen, each and every single week when I commentate these matches and these shows, I don't think Perfect Sean or Lawless deserve any gold belt for that matter. They're lucky to be even wrestling here. They're even lucky to have access to the gym. Those punks, those low-life thugs, degenerates, don't deserve any of this shit. Nice DDT. Alicia in deep trouble, but she somehow manages to bounce right back up as if nothing ever phases her. Oh, a nice dropping neck breaker. The folding chair, watch out, ladies. Watch out. Oh, no. Alicia gets the, the worst part of it. Sleeper hole by Alaska. Maybe, maybe Alaska, Nebraska will impress the championship committee, the board directors, and maybe she will be the number one contender. She hasn't had any ounce of gold, any matches for championship gold since the beginning of the year, and we're like more than halfway through the year already, and she hasn't won any championship gold. The championship committee must allow, and there must be, and there must be a vote. Oh my goodness, DDT on that folding chair! Keep in mind folks, these are not hardcore matches. These are no disqualification matches, but these young athletes are smart. And you can use weapons to your advantage, but I don't see any... I don't see any effort, any success in using weapons against your opponents. I just find it a very cheap way to win a match. That's my view. But well, on the previous match, Danny Kens did use weapons. Lucha Shell has used weapons too. And guys like Perfect Sean and Lawless, they know all the they all, they know all the true meaning of the word pain. They know the true meaning of hardcore and uncaringness. Unfaithfulness. To be disloyal to somebody. They think that the, they, they think they're God's gift in tag team wrestling. They consider them to be the, the best tag team alive. The best tag team alive in fantasy pro wrestling is Robert English and Kurtz. And if you guys tune in a few weeks ago, you would see the example right there, how Kurtz was so damn smart, not wasting any time. All he had to do was climb a ladder, pull the belt, and that's it. The belt's his. And we're gonna see those boys tonight that's going to be a fucking awesome and sick match, folks. I'm going to tell you that right now. 
Nice crucifix pin there by Alaska, Nebraska. Two, almost a three count. That would have been awesome. And now Alaska, Nebraska going for a back special, but look at that. Cytheria wasting no time. And Alaska now looking on her. Probably very, very upset because that move was canceled. Oh my goodness, super kick out of nowhere, and that is a picture-perfect on-target kick to the face of the sweet and sexy diva nomad Cytheria. We also have Scott Pilgrim and uh, Sweet Norman Brown on our telecast. That will be awesome. Scott Pilgrim has, has impressed his peers by far ever since his arrival here, ever since we felt so sorry for him getting publicly humiliated and beaten by Mick Labing, former Toronto Tag Team Champion himself, mind you. Well, he's going up against Sweet Norman Brown, a man who wants championship gold also since his inception, since his, since his arrival here in Fantasy Pro Wrestling. And we're gonna see that later on in this show. That'll be awesome. Last time I saw Scott Pilgrim, Against, was it was against El Guapo, and he knocked him out. Very amazing effort to a suicide dive, followed by a shining Weezod. And I think Cytheria was gonna go for the Widow's Peak, but I can't be too sure. That mat, that move was was cut too short, cut too soon. That's when Nebraska perfects that super kick. She can do it so well. And again, Cytheria breaking up the move. We're going to see lots of that in this match, let me tell you that. And I'm sure that Payne is watching on these three dazzling divas. And again, it's not for a, this is not for a contendership. This is strictly an exhibition. This is strictly what the championship committee are studying on. They want to know who deserves the belt more. Who deserves it? Alaska? Alicia? Or Cytheria. And already, I think Alicia was bleeding. Or maybe she's just glowing. I'm not too sure. Bottom line is, it's not looking good for Alicia. Now Cytheria calling all Quakers. Suplex, no. Oh, that was the sex bomb. I knew exactly what Cytheria was going to do. Sky Stanley out of position. Only think it's a one count, that could have been a two and a half, maybe two and eight tenths of a count. Finally, Alaska's kicks mean, mean a lot in, the, in this match to interrupt these two dazzling former champions. Alicia knows everything about women being women's champion. She's wanted about, about five times in her seven to eight year career here in Fantasy Pro Wrestling. She has, she knows a lot about the business. She's all about who's the best. And I think that I speak for herself when I say she's one of the top contenders and that's why she won the qualifying match. That's why she won. She beat Gina Carano entering the Wet n Wild competition. Hell not too long ago, it was Alicia who had beaten Alaska Nebraska to show the committee that she is next on deck for that championship belt. Cytheria not, not looking good at all, folks. Her stamina meter is dropping ever so slightly. And watch this. Oh. Every move is being interrupted. No move can be complete without opportunity. Proper timing and great technique as well. Alicia now's got a special. Keep them in mind there, Sight Theory. Don't get too cocky. You might get screwed. Oh! How about that? Maybe maybe it was Alicia who got screwed over right there. Sight Theory countering the execution, followed by Alaska's uh, butt attack, ass attack. For the booty call. My goodness, all I'm hearing is whips. There's no whips on screen. 
just bitch slaps. Another super kick to sizzling perfection. Like a nice steak. I could actually eat a steak on Cytheria's ass. Oh, nice counter there by Alicia Sky. Go for it. Count, damn it. And it is all over. Alicia amazingly, surprisingly wins this matchup. That's an upset. That's a definite upset. And she pinned Cytheria. That's three losses. That's three consecutive losses Cytheria is facing. Now I am sure that she understands how Danny Cans feel. Alicia, that's two for two. Alicia beat Alaska, and Alicia beat Cytheria. That's amazing. But this means nothing, folks. Man, these, these, these people behind me, they're, they're enjoying every bit of this action. My God, these fans are hardcore.